and my soulmates. They always help me clean my dishes. So clean sometimes you don't have to wash them. <laughs> How about that, Emily? <laughs> Ted Riley is a man who loves animals. No, don't fight. In his lifetime, he has single-handedly created a huge wildlife sanctuary in the tiny kingdom of Swaziland. His determination has placed him at the centre of a struggle between human life and animal life. Uh, you can get out, you can get out slowly, and, but don't turn your back on me. When you see him with wild animals, he certainly has a familiarity and lack of fear that is quite extraordinary. They're getting scarcer because the range is diminishing, being invaded by cattle and human sprawl. And as long as you stand your ground, they won't close with you. But if you turn your back, uh, that's another story. You don't ever turn your back on these things. What would happen if you turned your back? Well, I could grab you by the neck. Ted was born in Swaziland. As he grew up, he saw that the big game was rapidly disappearing. Agricultural and industrial development was swallowing up the veldt. By the 1960s, when he inherited the family farm, he decided he had to try and reverse the decline. Unless something was done, Swaziland was about to lose its entire wildlife heritage. I suppose those are part of the reasons that uh, made me commit the family farm which I inherited to um, nature conservation. One thing that makes Riley's task so urgent is the serious increase in poaching in Swaziland. He set off to neighbouring countries to catch the game that Swaziland had lost, efforts that were captured by Anglia television in the late 60s. They documented his single-minded and often single-handed pursuit of his quarry. Ted managed to bring back 22 species of game that had become extinct in Swaziland. More than 30 years later, not much has changed. Why is that? No traction. Slip and slide all over the place. Ted Riley's success has been rewarded by the King of Swaziland, and he's been given two much larger reserves, Halani and Mkaya, to look after as well. In fact, he's now the chief of all wildlife for Swaziland. But there's one animal whose return has given him particular pride and made him a controversial figure, the black rhino. An animal like this, as placid as he is, uh, is quite capable of coming at us um, unexpectedly. Just because he's a black rhino, that, that's what black rhino do. Black rhino are one of the few animals that will attack a vehicle. Penetrating the floor with its horn, they are powerful enough to flip it on its side. These black rhino are extremely rare. In most parts of Africa, they're extinct. Rhino have been the main target of poaching for decades. Their horns are worth up to $15,000. In the 80s, Ted's reserves were turned into battlefields. Heavily armed networks of mafia poachers came after his rhino. Back then, Ted fenced in his remaining rhino at night, 
His rangers defended them from forts, modelled on those used during the Boer War. Use a gun turret so that you can shoot from inside. People are after you, and you're not safe at all, but and it's just a matter of outwitting him. So then, like this. Well, at that stage we had these R5s, um, which are automatic weapons, and it's a much smaller round than the AK-47, but it's equally as devastating. You, you don't survive one of those shots if it hits you properly. Come nightfall, it was often a pitch battle. We did have a couple of cases where we came under siege and, and the Rangers were able to repel that from the top here. By 1990, only two black rhino remained in the whole country. The king was forced to act. He gave Ted a royal warrant that allowed him to arrest and, if necessary, shoot to kill the poachers. It's the biggest honour that you can possibly imagine. Since those powers came into force, not a single rhino has been killed. The Royal Warrant, still in force today, protects rangers from prosecution for murder, as long as the poacher draws his weapon first. The law is controversial in Swaziland. It vests a lot of power in Ted Riley. All these bits and pieces of laws, the game act and everything, it is solely controlled by one man in a country which is a sovereign state. This is very wrong. The former Minister for Natural Resources, Mahala Masamba, mm. says Ted's men act with impunity. Even the rangers, they break the law. When they come out of the reserve and kill people for killing the animals that have come out to destroy the, 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 their food. Ted admits his rangers have killed, but only in self-defense. And you know, even if we weren't game rangers, even if we were civilians in everyday life, if a guy pulls a gun on you, I think you're entitled to shoot him. So I don't know what he was on about, but he was trying to make a case against us. And uh, he's still trying to make a case against us. He's still trying, but you know, let him keep trying. Ted is unapologetic about cracking down on the poachers. Our guys aren't to be messed with. If they come in after a rhino, they'll get hurt. And then if he gets killed or maimed, you know, who's to blame for that? He knows he's breaking the law. He knows what the consequences are. And that's why we've got a lot of rhino here today. Today, more modern surveillance towers have replaced the forts. But anti-poaching patrols are still serious business. The forts are more of a defensive thing, whereas this is more of a proactive thing. From here we go out, we launch attacks. They know each and every footprint of all the staff in the park, and they can individualize these. So the security here is probably the best, I'd say, in Africa on rhino conservation. And I think that's generally acknowledged by all the rhino experts. On the way home, we are treated to the Swazi sense of humour. <laughs> Ted pulls over. Okay. He spotted a rare species of frog, or so he tells us. Can you see the frog? Yep. Yeah, frog, yeah. I can't, I can't see the frog. Pretty small. It's Frog, frog. Frog, frog. It's straight to. That's a long way away. Oh, it's a long way away. There's yeah. another one. Yeah, just behind you. See, walking. Oh, an elephant. Just, yeah. <laughs> the elephant comes towards the car, forcing us back. She has another elephant to watch out for. Very good. 
Ted is clearly proud of his achievement in bringing back the game, but he feels he's only been able to do it because of his hard line on poachers. He just can't forgive their cruelty to the animals. And you can see the incredible struggle this animal put up for this high tensile steel wire. How long do you think the animal struggled for? Who knows? Um, it went right through the flesh to the bone, so it was a long time. And then um, perhaps it was eaten by jackals alive. Have you found an animal in that state before? Plenty. It's happening now as I talk. It's all over Africa. People just don't know it because they don't see it. This will give you a better idea. That's the bone of a, a young rhino that got caught, struggled, struggled, and this um, snare bit through the flesh into the bone. That must have taken maybe even years to, to callous to that growth. The pain and agony was unbelievable. And out there, there's no morphine and no vet or doctor to help you. And, no painkiller, you just take a very really long time to die in absolute agony. Does it surprise you that humans are capable of doing things like this? No. Why not? This is what people do. People are, are the meanest, <laughs> the meanest animal on earth. It's not that he's protecting nature as such, he's protecting his own interest because these animals have become a source of living for him. It's business. Ted Riley has fought off every challenge to his animal kingdom. His animals are thriving because Ted met the poachers with equal firepower. But outside the gates of the reserve, a new challenge is threatening Swaziland's survival. This time, it's one Ted can't keep out. The country has the highest rate of AIDS in the world. With four in ten adults infected, many of Ted's staff have fallen ill to the virus. Ted supplied his staff with antiretroviral drugs. But unfortunately, it's come late, you know. We... We're in there already, and, and it's going to have a massive impact on us. And on your organisation? On every organisation. While new life stirs daily within the animal kingdom, the nation around it is in crisis. The scale of the epidemic outside his gates may yet persuade this chief of wildlife that protecting the meanest animal of all is also worthwhile. Yeah,